when we talk about performance numbers on FPGAs or uh, or on the GPUs or uh, or on other multi-core architectures or, or cell processor, um, there is something. Um, one of uh, a very wise man, I can't remember who, once said uh, there's 12 ways or 12 ways to fool the masses is what it's called. There's a quote which says, because oftentimes uh, uh, writers and technical writers and uh, people when they write about performance numbers, some, some of them very clearly overlook the overhead in getting the data in and out of the processor. Ultimately, in the real world, you know, it may be so many times, uh, it may be so fast and so good and everything, but if it does not include the data, end-to-end uh, -end data movement, it's not really a good benchmark. There's a, so a few things to watch out for when we look for benchmarks and all uh, other kinds of product specifications when, which are released in papers and articles. So, when it comes to cell processor also, we're trying to keep that in mind and uh, keep, uh, come out with effective techniques which will hide this latency that is, uh, or the overhead that is used in movement of data with computation in the background. So one of the uh, techniques that we came out with is a DMA list. So while, uh, one, one thing that we have is a simple DMA transfer, PPU to SPU, SPU to PPU, right? Um, once in a while, depending upon the application needs, what you might need to do is um, when uh, it's not enough just one by one buffer transfer. The application on the SPU side, what it wants to do is it's, it wants to initiate a huge chunk of uh, data transfer, just initiate it and then forget about it. Go keep working on the data on the SPU side. While this uh, li list transfer, what it does is it goes to the main memory, picks up data here, from wherever it's available and does it asynchronously, keeps collecting the data and sends it over to the SPU. So the important thing to note is while this activity is going on for data transfer, we are doing computation in the background. So DMA lists and double buffering are two effective techniques which we uh, deploy in applications to override this overhead for data communication or uh, IO transfer. Uh, let's look at the theory part of this. Now, there's basically two important aspects to it. One is you have to specify how many transfer elements are there. Every transfer element is about eight bytes, and each element specifies one transfer. Each transfer can, up, can be up to what? What is the maximum size of DMA transfers that can happen between a PPU and SPU? 16 kilobytes, right? So uh, any particular DMA operation, the limit of it is 16 kilobytes. We cannot do more than that. So every list element will specify 16 kilobytes, 16 kilobytes, 16 kilobytes, and there will be 2K such list elements. So on the whole, a total of 32 megabytes of data, data can be transferred from the main memory over to the local store. It's of, of, of course a streaming model because you know, we can't fit all that data in the local store. So the local store size is only 256 kilobytes, but we have this DMA list, it can have access to as much as 32 megabytes of data, which is collected asynchronously in the background. First, we have to specify the starting address of the effective address where it needs to start collecting the data, and then incrementally, as the data keeps on getting collected, then that offset is going, you know, keeps on increasing. And of course, we already know that any DMA list can transfer one, two, four, eight, or a multiple of 16 <coughs> bytes of memory to a total of 16 kilobytes. So local store address increments as, again, it needs to start somewhere in the effective address and it, uh, it needs to start somewhere in the local store address. So once you specify the starting local store, where, which, which will contain all this data, every time data is fetched with through every list element, it keeps on getting incremented. And this is how it, a list element looks like. There will be a transfer size, LTS, and there will be an effective address, low. And, uh, and optionally, there can be a stall and notify bit that can be set once in a while. Uh, sometimes, uh, you might, the DMA list might need to uh, say, okay, after this list element is fetched, the star, stop, because I need to notify it to the SPU that we have fetched, say, um, um, say 32 kilobytes of data, you want to stop there, or 48 kilobytes of data, you want to stop because the SPU needs to probably process that data before going ahead with the remaining list transfers. 
Okay, so effective address law, you have to specify that address and then the size of the list. And they're only specified once because once they're specified, we only need to keep on incrementing every time a list transfer happens. Okay, that <coughs> that's the structure definition, how it looks like. Struct DMA list element and then the size and the address. And then the command to uh, start the this kind of DMA operation is MFC underscore get L. So instead of MFC, MFC underscore get, we just do MFC underscore get list. And again, it's, it looks the same. You have to specify the beginning local store address and then the effective address and then the list, uh, this whole list that you have created over here and the size, tag ID usually just like that and then the group ID and the RID. All right, let's look at one example. So as we have covered in the uh, just now, there will be a stall bit in the structure. There's some reserved bits over here. Number of bytes in here is is, being, is, is set to 16 and then type def it to bits and then uh, this whole union consists of that structure and the effective address low. So in the DMA list element again we have to attribute and we have to align it, alignment right very important and then the, we start the actual this is the main part that does the uh, DMA tra list transfer. So basically as you can see using a single DMA list command we are able to transfer a large region from main memory over to the local store. Of course, every single list transfer is limited to 16 kilobytes. So, so the size for every transfer, if it is less than 16K, right, or if it's more than 16K, it is, if it is less than 16K, it's set to n bytes of transfer per list element. If it's more, then it is truncated to 16K because it won't just, it won't go through anyway. And then size of is set to the SZ value that we've just computed, initialize the effective address and then decrement the size uh, with the amount of bytes that we have just initialized this list element with so that the next element gets the uh, next, uh, the remaining bytes to be transferred and then increment the effective address space because we want to store it in the new offset or we want to get the data from the new offset. Okay. And then uh, basically list size becomes i times size of struct DMA list element and then uh, which is the, comp the total size of the list, right? And then do the MFC get. This is the old uh, um, API and now it's just uh, MFC underscore get L. You don't need to use this MFC DMA 32. Okay, so double buffering. Building on top of the DMA list technique, now we have another technique where we are exactly trying to see, you know, for example, if when you are, your DMA is going on, how to overlap with compute. And it, again, this is also a standard technique. It's not a new invention by IBM, uh, done by other architectures also. Uh, we are just trying to provide via the uh, double buffering technique how it happens in, in, in cell architecture. So basically, we have to start one DMA list transfer. The whole key, the whole key is to overlap the DMA transfer, when the DMA is exactly going on, operating on the previous chunk of data that is fetched. So we have to start, the whole overlap contain, you know, is, it comes between computing on the data and then initiating the DMA and while you're waiting for the first DMA to complete, right, or, or when you're getting the first chunk of data, obviously there's no overlap. From the second chunk of data onwards, when you're waiting for the second DMA to complete, you're working on the first DMA data that you've already fetched. So we start a DMA tra data transfer from main storage to buffer B, right? Wait for the transfer to complete, use the data in buffer B and repeat. Let's look at a diagram to give it give a good idea. So we have the first iteration over here. The, these, these portions uh, signify compute and this is the portion that signify DMA input. So the purpose of double buffering is to maximize the time spent and then minimize the uh, time spent in the compute phase of the program and then minimize the time spent waiting for DMA transfer to complete. So uh, another a key thing is multiple local store buffers and double buffering we use two buffers and triple buffering we'll use four. There's, uh, there's applications which use you know four times, I'm not sure what the word is for that, but you'll have four buffers and you're trying to cre create a pipeline for four buffers. In fact, we did have an application which uses triple buffering, the Extreme Blue project, uh, Accelerated Vision. Okay, 
So, and then with the, with the same thing, the same rules apply for these DMAs also. Uh, for all the get and put operations, you can use fences and you can use barriers with all uh, double buffering techniques also. Okay, so this is a good diagram. Let's uh, dig deeper into this. So we first initiate the DMA transfer for buffer to buffer zero, right? And then you initiate the trans DMA transfer to buffer B1, right? You, bait, uh, you wait on the DMA transfer to buffer zero, on the buffer zero to complete. You use the data in buffer zero, right? Then initiate the DMA transfer to buffer zero, wait for the DMA transfer to buffer one on buffer uh, B1 to complete, and then use the data in buffer B1, 